when we wrote the standards, we didn't start out with grade level standards bulleted out. We started out with what we called progressions. We asked members of the work team to write progressions, which were narrative descriptions of how a particular domain plays out across the grade levels. For example, there was a progression on number and operations in base 10, which describes how you go from addition and subtraction in grades one and two to multiplication and division in grades three and four. Then there's a fraction progression, which comes in at grade three, goes through to grade five. There's a tie in there between the number and operations in base 10 and the operations and algebraic thinking progressions and the fractions progression. These tie in points were established by looking for natural places where there was a link. For example, in grade three, you're studying multiplication of whole numbers. In that same grade level in measurement and data, you're looking at uh, area because you calculate areas of rectangles by multiplying. So these natural tie-in points enabled us to splice the progressions together and then we slice them into grade level standards. But because of that preliminary spade work of starting with the progression, starting with the structure of the subject, we were able to preserve in the final standards that idea of building across grade levels so that teachers in grade three could look at the grade four standards and see why they were teaching something. They could see a standard that sort of mirrors but builds on what they're doing, or they could see a standard in grade two that prepared for what they're doing. So that's an important aspect to sort of higher order structure in the standards that's part of what we mean by coherence in the standards.